Why silver? It's where it was movies yeah, and stuff. All the movies they show. I think it's very dependent well, on the planet they come from and uh, yeah, gravity they're... and mass of the planet no, and the sure, atmosphere. Sure, because the gravity's heavy and it's pushing them down. I think like if if there was some type of life form uh, as we know it on on Jupiter, they would be very giant squat creatures uh, because of the Avatar. gravity takes place on a moon of a Jupiter-like planet. If you saw the movie, you see that it's really a moon. Pandora is a moon, ah. and it orbits around a Jupiter-like planet. Uh, that's like Europa, which we yes. actually think has a liquid ocean underneath the ice cover. A moon of Jupiter may actually have life on it. Hey, did you like Avatar? Oh, I thought it was great. Uh, you know, it was sort of like Dances with Wolves meets Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> it's always... It's like basically it's the story of the Ewoks. <laughs> and Pocahontas yeah. and... Yeah, yeah uh, as far as As far as uh, science goes, was there anything accurate in that movie? Uh, well, it is, it is set 100 or so years in the future. However, right. uh, it may be possible for us to, to control <laughs> mentally a robot and eventually maybe even a clone. That's the whole basis of the movie, Avatar, right? Yeah. We can already control robots mentally using telepathy. Yeah, those uh, people can move hands. Oh, hold on, let them finish. Sorry. Yeah. This has been done in Japan. In Japan, the robot Asimo can be hooked up to an EEG sensor to the brain. The brain sends out radio, and it can actually control four movements of the Asimo robot. The arms and the head can be controlled by mental telepathy. Uh, and uh, in the future, we may be able to just think and have robot butlers, robot maids, robot cooks do things uh, for us. Wow, that's good. And then there'll be like robot uh, rights people that will say Maybe. that we can't treat robots poorly. Yeah, to and, pay them, uh, you know, minimum wage. Yeah, that's when they become aware and decide that they have more power than us, and then we can get into the robot wars. Judgment day, man. Yep. Right. And then you get Robot Al. Yes. Well, we're going to talk about I am awesome. Right. We're going to talk about what happens if the robots take over. How, how are we humans going to be able to gra grapple with that? Yeah, not, up yeah. That. I think everyone should be checking out your show, uh, Doc. Well, it's a so, fun show. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, you know, we, we interview the top scientists. Hey, uh, Oscar's yeah. right around the corner. What was your What was your favorite movie of the year? It's totally off topic, obviously. Uh, well, you know, I like 2012. Uh, of course, it was science fiction, and I don't think anything's mm. going to happen in 2013. We're all going to be here in 2013. You think so? It was so. a fun movie. You know, well, it you really know, stretches the imagination. You explained on our show, and no one picked up on it, that that 2012 thing was a bunch of crap. But they're still talking about it like it's a real thing that's going to happen. Isn't there well, it's shelters? Westerners who hijack the Mayan prophecy. The Mayan prophecy never talked about doomsday. It's a cyclical calendar. So the Westerners saw a way of making money off this uh, indigenous uh, uh, calendar, and so they hijacked it, writing books and all sorts mm. of different kinds of wild theories. Everyone puts their theory right on top of, of the Mayan prophecy, which is actually 2012 is a time of joy. It's a celebration. It's New Year's. It's oh, New Year's on really? the Mayan calendar. Well, I, that's that a little different, be, huh? I kind of would like a little thinning of the herd, to tell you the truth. <laughs> At this point, you know, the traffic this is a little much. With it. I'd get to work a lot quicker. We'd have less listeners, but who cares? <laughs> yeah, and I'm making it sound like I'd make it through. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone sounds, thinks sounds, they're the ones that are making it through. terrorist talk to me, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, why do you think the, uh, the weather seems completely out of control there, Doc? Uh, well, the reason why we're having snow, okay, first of all, it is a, a minor fluctuation in, in the earth. However, global warming does create more moisture. And moisture, when it hits cold air from the Arctic, turns into snowstorms. So ironically enough, if the Earth heats up and there's more moisture in the air, it means you have more swings, swings in the weather. You have more flooding in one area, more droughts in another area. And so realize that the American Southwest is having a drought right now uh, during the Olympics. That was the warmest winter Olympics on record, mm -hmm. even as we had snowstorms in the Northeast. Right. Yeah. So swings, swings in the weather is what global warming predicts. So you you so you you buy into the fact that uh, we are um, changing the climate of the planet. Uh, well, it's uh, everyone believes that the Earth is warming up. Okay, even George W. Bush acknowledged that fact. The question is how much of it is driven by human activity, and with ninety percent yes. confidence, we can say that it's human activity. Really. Yeah. Even with volcanoes spewing all that, I mean, more more uh, uh, sulfur and, and stuff into the atmosphere than American or, or uh, uh, human factories can? Uh, well, right now there's, not, there's no Mount Pinatubo or there's no Krakatoa uh, shooting gigantic amounts of volcanic ash in the air. Right. Right now it's pretty quiet. 
We just have earthquakes instead. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of earthquakes going on. Oh, and also speaking about earthquakes, by the way, I just want to mention one thing, and then then I got to take off. Okay, Los Angeles will probably be the next site for a big, big earthquake. Uh, Prediction. How's Venice looking? Why, why are you saying that, sir? <laughs> uh, I say that because the, the lower San Andreas Fault is cyclical. It breaks every 150 years on average. Mm. The last break was 1857. That's the last big so we're, uh, yeah. earthquake. So we're due. So it was the last we're big overdue. break. So we're overdue. Right there. How big would the earthquake be? Well, we don't know. Uh, anywhere from 7.0 to 8.0 to maybe even, so, even bigger. But all I'm saying is that the lower San Andreas Fault is cyclical, and it breaks roughly every 150 years. Of course, this is still black magic. No one knows for sure. But in our lifetime, in our lifetime, there's a good chance that Los Angeles, San Francisco, Tokyo, and Istanbul, that one of those great cities will be destroyed in our lifetime. You'll uh, wow. Wait, 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 wait. Well, no, no, I, I, I'm trying to buy a house in L.A., so you're saying hold off? For, uh, <laughs> hold off. Like, uh, well, just wait and see um, if I can pick up some rubble nobody real knows. Nobody knows where the next big one will be. All I'm saying is that even the U.S. government, even the U.S. government, the official U.S. government statement of the San Andreas Fault, says that it's cyclical, it does break every 150 years, and the last one was 1857. That's a statement of the U.S. Geologic Survey. And the earthquake will be so big it'll destroy the, the entire city? Uh, well, the one scientist there was quoted as saying that every freeway in L.A. will be destroyed. Mm. Uh, natural gas lines will be broken, severed. Um, the port of Los Angeles will be closed, and property damage could be two hundred and fifty billion dollars. But will we still get? Tourism, will we still get Dancing with the Stars? Uh, <laughs> That's uh, all <laughs> I, I really care about, Doctor Cocker. Let's let Doctor Cocker yeah, go. Thank he's, uh, you, Doctor. A busy oh, man yeah. these days. He's all over the place. Doctor Michio Kaku. Uh, you could catch him. Uh, when when does the next season start? Uh, well, it starts in fall, but the reruns are uh, playing on the Science Channel. Check your local listings for the Science Yes. Channel. Yeah, we will, man. We uh, definitely will. He's really good. Uh, the shows are very entertaining and really get you thinking. Thank you again, Doctor. Okay, no problem. We love you, man. Thank you. Take care. Uh, anytime. All right. I like when he says anytime. We haven't pissed him off yet. That's good. Well, yep. yeah, That's me, good for us. Hold, hold on. Let me check my text. That guy's fucking oh, great. Oh, wow. Let me look at that. No Not Dr. Steve. one Dr. Steve calling him a... Stupid scumbag or anything like that. Doctor Steve hates Michio Kaku. Oh. Thinks he's a physics hack. <laughs> he yeah, really I, does. I understand. If you're in the same industry, I, I, you know, like it's probably like when I watch a comedian that I don't think is very good. You, you know, I, I, that's a different argument. That yeah, maybe yeah. he's a physics hack. Was, I thought he was. Good, that was some good stuff right there. He's good. He puts I, it. I always laugh though when he's got to put it in terms that like dummies can understand and he knows it like he could recite things in front of other physicists and we'd all just look like a deer in headlights and they'd all be going oh yeah, in their chin. <laughs> oh <laughs> yes yes so he's got to go it is like a carpet being pulled towards you you think he says that in front of fucking no. physicists he just talks formulas with exactly those guys. Yeah, yeah. i was about to say they, they just blurt uh, yeah. out numbers, <laughs> numbers and letters and, and brackets and fucking and symbols we don't even know what yeah. they yeah, mean that, that backwards e yeah, yeah, yeah it's Shit. like alice in wonderland yes no the new one was the Skater. I like the skater one. Like a skater pulling her arms but in. It's like he brought it for the Winter Olympics. Like, you know. Yes, it's like other curling. Times a year he wouldn't do that. It's like curling. You must sweep in front of the spaceship <laughs> to get it to warp speed. <laughs> really? What? He, although it did explain it when he said of it's course, like oh, one arm spinning. That, that makes sense. That's why he's yeah, popular. Because he can communicate yeah. to the dummies out there like You're, us. We're thinking on small terms. You know, the planet is giant, but it is a size it does have a definitive size and mass so when there's an earthquake if you get a collapse of some of that outer crust uh it is gonna throw off the uh Ugh. the balance of it that's creepy i'll tell you what that, that earthquake thing scaring the shit out of me Just a lot of earthquakes no, the, the earthquake in la it's, oh. i'm really thinking about it uh, now yeah well, well well the thing about that mm. too uh he's a ghoul because he kind of was <laughs> laughing as he was saying that, if you notice. It's like, <laughs> I will in destroy our lifetime. you. And he just says it casually, like, we will lose a major city in our lifetime. It is to a, like to an earthquake. when Lex Luthor launched the missile into the San Andreas <laughs> <laughs> to make prime real estate in Arizona. <laughs> I remember that one. But when one. he said it was like a 7, what was Heidi? What was Heidi on the... 8.8. 8. Oh, I guess it's not as bad as Heidi. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Chile was 8.8. 8. 
Right. All right, we can do Haiti a, was a we seven can, something. We yeah. can do a seven in LA. You know, a seven wouldn't be a problem for LA. Everything there is earthquake proof, and everything that's not deserves yeah. to be knocked down. That, they got those buildings on fucking spot.